Alrighty, before we get into this video, um, I wanted to let you guys know that I've officially teamed up with BetUS, America's favorite sports books. So my sports bettors out there, this one is for you. Definitely check this out. So, BetUS, they offer live in game betting, incredible odds with daily odds boosters. They offer props, parlays, fast payouts, and on top of that, they have exceptional one on one customer service. Um, so, if you guys enjoy betting on sports just as much as I do, definitely check this out. MLB betting, NCAA basketball betting, uh, NBA, NFL, UFC. They also offer an online casino as well, so it's not just sports betting. Um, so check this out. I've teamed up with them. They're offering a 125% sign-up bonus when you sign up using promo code 9 or J. I'm going to have it up on the screen somewhere here. Sign up using promo code 9 or J. Deposit $100 into your account and receive 125% sign-up bonus. So in other words, if you deposit $100, you're going to get $125 back in playable money. It's a great offer. You guys will not want to miss out on this one. There's going to be a link in my description to sign up. Um, and yeah, take advantage of this, why this promo lasts. Um, again, that's promo code 9 or J. It's up on the screen somewhere. Uh, but with that being said, let's get right into the video. Alrighty, 49ers Packers divisional round playoff game for all the marbles, do or die game, win or go home. Um, starting off with the injury report here, the 49ers are actually very, very healthy going into this going into this game, which is massive. Cleveland Farrell is the only player on the injured injury list that is currently out of this game. Dre Greenlaw is questionable, but he is trending towards playing. He's on the right track to play tomorrow, so obviously I would expect. Dre Greenlaw to be playing tomorrow and then Logan Ryan's also on this injury report too um, but the good news is it's not serious he's questionable going into this game I would expect him to play knowing that it's not serious um, again Jair Brown to Sean Gibson those guys will both be back tomorrow so it's not like we absolutely need Logan Ryan for this game um, but yeah man literally Cleveland Farrell's out and that's it so the Niners will be going into this game Pretty much as healthy as they possibly can be, which is also good knowing that, you know, the, the health is trending towards the right, the right direction before, you know, all these playoff games that the 49ers hopefully will play, of course. Um, but either way, before we kind of get into the keys to win this game, Packers fans are really getting high on this win last week against the Dallas Cowboys, and I think a lot of Packers fans are forgetting that we beat the, the Dallas Cowboys by 32 points on Sunday Night Football Week 5. Um, I don't know why you guys think you are hot right now. You've only beat bad teams, really, besides the Dallas Cowboys, of course. But everybody knew and everybody knows what happens in the playoffs with the Dallas Cowboys. So beating the, the Cowboys, um, whether it's in their house or not, is not that impressive, to be completely honest. Your last five wins are the Buccaneers... Or, excuse me, you didn't even beat the Buccaneers. You guys got beat by 14. You beat the Panthers, worst team in football. You beat the Minnesota Vikings, one of the worst teams in football. And you beat the Chicago Bears, who are also one of the worst teams in football. You guys haven't beat anybody. I don't care about the Cowboys. The Cowboys aren't good in the playoffs. Everybody knew Dak Prescott was going to choke. That win's not impressive. Um... So I don't know why these Packers fans think they are, like, top-notch now. The team's top-notch. You guys aren't. I'm sorry. You guys are facing a whole different animal tomorrow in San Francisco traveling across country. I would watch what you say and say things wisely. Anyways, on to the next thing I want to cover before we get into the keys. There's a Milwaukee Green Bay Packers radio host earlier in the week that mentioned that he believes the Packers need to put a late hit on Brock Purdy. Screw the 15-yard penalty. He wants the Green Bay Packers to hit Brock Purdy late. Um, and, and basically, like pretty much what he said was take him out of the game um, or ring his bell. Um, for one, that's BS. I don't care who you're playing in the playoffs, but you should never wish injuries upon anybody you're playing. And that guy works for ESPN. Um, if that guy works for ESPN... I don't know why I'm not employed at ESPN because, again, being an advocate towards a, you know, the Green Bay Packers hitting Brock Purdy late tomorrow is absolutely bogus. Um, so shame on you to that Packers reporter. Um, karma, karma will come back around at some point in time, um, and, and the Niners will make him eat his words tomorrow. But either way, keys to win this game 
Uh, look, man, Green Bay, you got to tip the cap to them. Um, you know, they they were not expected to do a lot this year, um, you know, post Rodgers. But they have, man. Jordan Love is the truth. He is their guy. Um, he's been playing extremely well. Again, it has been against bad teams. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's been playing very consistently. He's been playing uh, smart with the football, you know, hitting the right reads, limiting turnovers. He's been balling. I'm not going to lie. Um, but, again, he's facing a completely different animal tomorrow with that Niners defense. Um, so, for one, keys to win this football game. Pass rush. Number one starting off, it's the pass rush. Nick Bosa, Javon Hargrave, Eric Armstead's back tomorrow. Um, Chase Young, you guys have to get to Jordan Love tomorrow. You get to Jordan Love and disrupt some things, it won't bode well for Jordan Love and that offense. So obviously, number one's got to be getting to Jordan Love. Um, if you guys can create pressure, um, you know, keep him in the pocket, uh, disrupt the pass, that's going to be massive tomorrow. And obviously, we all know what happens if the 49ers defensive line is is rocking. You know, turnovers start to happen and things of that nature. Jordan Love can get, you know, iffy with the football in his hands. He can start making bad decisions. So if the pass rush is getting to Jordan Love, it's going to be a very long game for that Packers offense. Um, moving on, of course, Christian McCaffrey. This guy is in for a massive game tomorrow. He's obviously... He's been dealing with uh, a mild calf strain over the past couple weeks, but obviously with that, you know, with him getting pretty much three weeks of rest, um, he's going to be back fully healthy, ready to go. Green Bay ranks in the bottom, what, six, seven teams of the worst rush defense in the entire NFL. Christian McCaffrey, get him the ball. Whether it's in the passing game, the run game, whatever it may be, their rush defense, their, their defense against running backs in general is bad. Um, and when you have the best running back in football, it should be very easy for the 49ers to take advantage of that and have success in the run game. So I think getting Christian McCaffrey involved tomorrow is huge. Um, again, whether that's in the passing game, uh, the, the run game, whatever it is, give Christian McCaffrey the ball. Um, again, I think they're going to have a lot of success in doing so. Green Bay ranks, you know, in the bottom six to seven teams when it comes to rush defense. Um, so again, man, as long as you can get, if, if you can get Christian McCaffrey involved early and often, um, it's going to be a long day for that Packers defense, and you're going to be able to control the game um, again by, by giving Christian McCaffrey the ball. So I think Christian McCaffrey could be in for a massive day tomorrow, to be completely honest. Um, I would not be shocked if this guy has at least 130, 140 yards from scrimmage total, passing, rushing, um, or receiving and rushing. So Christian McCaffrey getting involved is going to be huge. Um, he's the best running back in football. You know, um, he, he is a headache for opposing defenses no matter who we're playing. Um, again, I mean, I think with the Packers, be, the Packers rush defense and just their defense against running backs being as bad as it is, there's no doubt in my mind that Christian McCaffrey will be heavily involved tomorrow, and that's going to be a massive key to win this game. Um, number three, I think it's got to be these cornerbacks. Uh, Diamador Lenore, Charvarius Ward's having a great season. Um, these cornerbacks have to... They have to stick with their zones. They have to, you know, play these guys. They got Jaden Reed, who is a very speedy wide receiver. I think... Really, it's not just the cornerbacks. It's really the entire secondary. And again, man, like that secondary is going to feed off of whatever that defensive line is doing. Um, so if that defensive line is eating tomorrow and the Packers just simply have no answer, the 49ers will have a lot of success tomorrow in their secondary. But I think in terms of playing, they're sticking to their zones. Um, you know, Jair Brown and Deshaun Gibson not letting anything come over the top too much. Those are going. To, I mean, that that stuff's massive for tomorrow. Green Bay's actually did a great job at killing safeties over the top. We've seen it last week. Romeo Dobbs had an insane game. He simply was just beating the safeties over the top. If the safeties play their game, and the, and they do what they're supposed to be doing, along with that defensive line eating, uh, this 49ers defense is going to have success, and there will be turnovers. So as long as you're not you know, biting on anything um, and making sure you're keeping everything underneath and not over the top of the safeties. You know, this 49ers team can have a lot of success tomorrow. 
Um, Jair Brown, Tashawn Gibson, Charvarius Ward, Diamador Lenore, those guys could be in for big days if they just play their game and, and feed off of what that defensive line is doing. Now, if the defensive line isn't obviously performing to how they should be, which I don't know why they wouldn't be because obviously they've had much needed rest um, and they're widely regarded as the, the top defensive unit, the top defensive line in the entire NFL. If, if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, that's a problem. So there's no doubt in my mind that, that this defensive line will will be performing at a high level tomorrow. And again, man, that, like that's one of the keys. Like you got to get to Jordan Love. You can't let him extend plays and, and do all this other stuff. And Jordan Love is actually pretty good against the Blitz as well. Um, but again, it's not just one person. Um, you know, As long as that 49ers defensive line is doing what they're supposed to be doing, getting to him, disrupting the pass, um, you know, hitting their gaps right, this 49ers defense will have a lot of success. Again, like this whole entire defense all year has fed off of what that defensive line produces um, and what that defensive line does. So, you know, again, I mean, it's like if the defensive line plays good tomorrow, I know the secondary will play good tomorrow. Um, I think another key you can throw in here is Fred Warner versus Aaron Jones. Um, look, I mean, Aaron Jones is an elusive running back. He absolutely went off last week in, in Dallas. He had three touchdowns. I believe he was well over 150 yards total. Fred Warner versus Aaron Jones is going to be a key matchup tomorrow. Um, Fred's going to have to be lurking on him all game, and I and I know he will. Fred Warner is the most complete and the most elite linebacker in the entire National Football League, so there's no doubt in my mind that this guy will show up tomorrow and do what he's supposed to do. Um, but look, I mean, it's it's literally all about the defense tomorrow. If that defense is producing and performing at a high level, and they're and they're giving our offense opportunities to stay on the field longer. This 49ers team will blow out the Packers. Now, I'm not coming on here saying that the you know the 49ers are going to blow out the Packers, but I wouldn't be shocked if they did because the 49ers by far have the better team. Um, no disrespect to the Green Bay Packers, but I mean they're simply playing a whole different animal. They're playing a team that's widely regarded as the best team in the National Football League, the best roster from top to bottom. Literally, the Niners have to go out there and just do what they do. They have to play Niners football. If they do that tomorrow, we'll win this game easily, no problem. Now, I think something that we could struggle on um, for tomorrow, I think it's going to be, it could be the passing game. Now, Brock Purdy, obviously limiting turnovers tomorrow. That's going to be huge. He's got to keep, you know, the ball with us. He cannot be throwing it, you know, to the to the Packers or anything like that. No he doesn't need to force anything. You can definitely add that as a key in there too. Like Brock Purdy limits turnovers tomorrow. You know, this 49ers offense can roll. Um, but I think something that they could struggle on is is the passing game tomorrow. And that's why getting Christian McCaffrey involved, you know, often and early will be so big. Because if that run game is working tomorrow, the, the passing offense will open up. Um, and, and they're going to have success in doing that. But thing with Green Bay is again they rank you know middle of the pack um, in terms of in terms of pass defense they have a great secondary over there led by Jair Alexander who actually had a pick last week um, Brock Purdy has to limit turnovers again uh, there's I mean I'm not you know scared that he won't I know Brock Purdy is going to come ready to play tomorrow and he's going to want to ball out especially I'm sure he's heard what that Milwaukee radio host said for ESPN um but yeah, man, like it, it's as simple as just sticking to what you know best, playing 49er football. I definitely would expect the Niners to approach their offense tomorrow in a more rushing manner. Like I would expect Christian McCaffrey to get the workload tomorrow on the offense. But guys like George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, like all three of those guys could have monster games. Um, again, and like it's like if that run game is working tomorrow that pass game will work. Um, that's going to open up a lot of more opportunities to have success in the pass game. So limit turnovers, Fred Warner versus Aaron Jones. There's no doubt in my mind Fred Warner is going to keep him in check. Um, he's going to have to because, again, I mean, Aaron Jones is one of the more elusive backs in the entire NFL. He can do it in the running game, the receiving game. He's kind of like a do-it-all back. Um, and, look, I mean, secondary, 
Secondary cannot get killed over the top. I'm sure Jordan Love's going to want to hit the deep ball a couple times tomorrow. Um, so, I mean, again, as, as long as them Niners, that Niners secondary is keeping everything underneath, um, you know, making sure that they're not getting beat over the top. Um, and on top of that, you know, with the defensive line getting to Jordan Love, like the Niners can easily win this game by doing what they do best, um, getting to the getting to the quarterback. You know, we all know what happens when that Niners defensive line starts eating um, and getting to the cornerback. Turnovers happen, you know, and 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 that's something again tomorrow that I think the 49ers will have. I mean, one to two turnovers is kind of what what I think we should expect to be completely honest. Like I just don't see Jordan Love not getting overstimulated in the pocket with that fierce Niners pass rush. Um, turnovers will come tomorrow. Again, they just have to be patient. You know, stick to their role, do their jobs. 49ers can easily come out of here with the win. Um, I can't wait for this game. I'm pumped. You know, we can talk about so many things that will be key going into this game, but obviously just to just to kind of recap and cover really quick, pass rush getting to Jordan Love, safeties in the secondary, don't get beat over the top, don't get beat on the long ball. Get Christian McCaffrey involved early and often, often, and Brock Purdy and that offense needs to limit turnovers. It's not even just about Brock Purdy either. It's about ball security, no fumbles. Uh, just play 49ers football. We will win this game. Um, so with that being said, obviously, um, score prediction, obviously taking the Niners here. Um, to be completely honest, and, and I don't want to say that the Niners will blow them out because, again, it's playoff football. Anything can happen. But I like the Niners pretty convincingly, to be completely honest. Um, so I'm going to say the Niners win this 30-20. to 20. I think they win by at least 10 here. Um, I think they'll cover the spread. I'm pretty sure they've opened up as 10.5-point favorites. Um, so, again, I mean... Just stick to what you know best. This Green Bay Packers team has nothing on this roster whatsoever. We are the better team from from top to bottom. It's so bad that their own radio hosts out there in Green Bay and Milwaukee want the Packers to purposely late hit Brock Purdy and to try and hurt him and take him out of the game. I know there are some 49ers players that have heard that. I know they're going to be pissed off and ready to come out here firing tomorrow. And that's exactly what I'm expecting. The Niners need to go in here, make a statement, you know, have the rest of the NFL on notice that, look, hey, we are the best team in the NFL. Um, we're three wins away from winning a Super Bowl. We got to win tomorrow. We got to win in the NFC Championship. And then we obviously have to win the Super Bowl. Super Bowl or bust. Winner go home. 49ers Packers tomorrow for all the marbles. I got the Niners 30-20. to 20. Obviously, let me know your guys' score predictions in the comments down below. But yeah, it's as simple as just sticking to what you know best. Pass rush getting home. Get Christian McCaffrey involved. Packers don't have a good run defense whatsoever. And it's going to be a it's going to be very hard for them to, to be able to keep up with what Christian McCaffrey does. Um, limit turnovers on the offensive side. The 49ers will win this game. And again, if that defensive line is getting to Jordan Love, only good things will come out of that. So give me the Niners 30-20 to 20 here. Um, obviously, you know, um, it's, it's, it's one of them things tomorrow where the 49ers are playing a team that pretty much has nothing to play for. If I'm a Packers fan, I'm already content with what they've done this season. They weren't even expected to make the playoffs this year. But now look, look, I mean, look at them. They're in the NFC Championship or they're in the um, divisional round taking on the Niners, um, you know, one game away from potentially going to the NFC Championship, but it's not happening. Not this go-around. Niners win this 30-20. to 20. Stick to what you know best. Play your game. I know they're going to be pissed off knowing some of these players heard what that radio host had to say about Brock Purdy. So I would expect Brock Purdy to have a master class tomorrow as well. But it's not even about that, man. Just do what you do best. That's literally all. You can win this game, no problem. Um, so with that being said, as always, go Niners. Obviously, um, I can't. I simply cannot wait for this game. Like I'm sure a lot of you, other guys out there. Um, but obviously, I'm going to be on here a couple more times, going over a couple more things. But yeah, man. I mean, Niners. Niners can easily have this one in the bag again, man. Just play your game. 
limit turnovers, be smart with the football, no fumbles, defense steps up, we'll be fine. We will be completely fine. So Niners 30-20, to 20, let me know your guys' score predictions in the comments down below. Um, as always, go Niners. I'll see you guys in the next one.